This podcast is brought to you by Sideline Productions, who provide national, regional, and local events with large modular LED displays, as well as live production services. Visit them at sideline-productions.com. And by Skipping Stone Studios, storytellers from Brookings, South Dakota, providing businesses, organizations, and nonprofits with video, post-production, and photography. Bring your story to life and visit them at skippingstonestudios.com. Welcome, everyone, to the Brookings, South Dakota, One Million Cups podcast. Today, we'll be hearing from two different speakers from our community. Up first, Scott and probably our most regular One Million Cups attendee, Boris, have a back and forth conversation about Boris's big data consultancy and what they have going on in Brookings. Second, we have Heidi Gullickson from the Brookings United Way. And she's here to discuss the new 211 program starting up in our community, followed by questions from the audience. Enjoy the show. Well, we're going to try something a little different today. We're going to do a conversation. It's on. That one's on? Yep. Okay, good. We're good. So we're going to do a conversation. So I'm going to uh, ask him questions because this is kind of a big topic. So we want to make it uh, accessible and hear a little bit about that. So let's just start, Boris. Why don't you tell us what you do? Oh, <laughs> now I'm just follow the industrial trend in big data. What people doing? Because I don't have a customer. I'm ready for the customers. And now I'm just follow trend what's going on in the industry in the industry of big data. And so you, uh, when we talk about big data, maybe try to explain what that is a little bit for everyone. Okay, so, it's nice to talk in the children music. Why? Because how children develop itself and became a person? First, it's the physical world, we're moving, falling, then we're starting talking, and this is actual the pattern recognition. The human and all these animals, how we recognize faces, words, speech. This is what we physically learn during life. Now, the amount of data produced, cell phone, computers, cell, so big, what it's like a new reality. People don't follow these uh, numbers or events, but the computer we have. How many sell, where people go, where is more people, people all, uh, can follow, where is the revolution started, what is going on in the world, everything now in the data. And certainly this is not the case for small businesses, but we have to know what's going on in the world. So, the amount of data, and actually it's nothing very complex. Everybody, if uh, he, entrepreneur or uh, just person want to be educated, it can be done. Because I did this maybe 30 years with students in science. Now the data from the science analysis data, pattern recognition, come to the people. Yeah, so there's all these data points, like all these videos and facts and news, and you're saying we can take all of that information and kind of understand it in one yeah. way, in one place. It was on my life. First, the mathematics came to the medical world. It was a lot of software, people starting to use the uh, statistic to understand how the medicine work, what is the disease. It was big computers, and all this publication was in the medical world. And then we like disappear, but and I realize what's going on. Walmart has thousand stores all over the world. A lot of goods in the car. So how we can follow what's going on in the industry? And it's not only now Walmart. 
Recently, Hewlett Packard separated. One part of the company will do the computer. Other part of the company, new part, will just analyze data for the industry. Yeah. So it, it, it's so big, like manufacturing computer, it's working. And I'm now, I was very enthusiastic starting this company because it was, oh, it's uh, data, it's new oil. New oil? Yes, it's just okay. uh, so fascinating. And for big companies, it's fascinating. You cannot follow. The small, uh, just so we were talking here, the small company, it's like driving car. You see the, in the windows here, you have the mirror and you're good. To manage the car, to manage the traffic, maybe not in the Brookings, in the, now is in the Brookings problem. You need different tools. You need tools to see what's going traffic, you need helicopters, you need different, and now, Computer, we are so good, you can do this on small laptop, million, million events analyze and find out what is going on. Yeah. Like, like people follow what's going on on Twitter where we started sell new product in the mall. We can figure out in a lifetime, money, change the prices. So this is like, okay, it's a, some kind of new universe appear here. Yeah. So what used to be for Walmart or Hewlett Packard, how they measure all their stores, is something that Seth can even do in his brewery to know, you know, the prices. It's uh, how much beer he should have. All this, all this data. Um, but tell us, what do you do with it? Are you a researcher, or do you work as a consultant and, and sell services? I was a, t a teaching student, okay, for a long time in science. I almost half a century. So then. Almost I'm, half a century. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. Yep. It's September. Will be half a century. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll have a party. Okay. <laughs> so I just figure out what's going on now with the big data. What the scientists were doing forever. It just wasn't computer, but all this uh, planet rotation, all this. Nile River level, people make observation, analyze, and we uh, do this, and we in uh, academia do this for a year. But now it came to the real life everywhere. And uh, the big boost for me was, uh, was a story in public radio about. Uh, Big uh, seed company bought a weather company for billion of dollars, and now uh, this uh, uh, famous company, the seeds, uh, what is the name? I uh, sell the seeds. So a big seed company bought yeah, someone else. Because some of the data. weather. Uh -huh. Now we can predict everything what's going on on the farmer's field. Okay. And kind of expect what the price will be, everything. And now we bought a smaller company to monitoring what the uh, farmers do. And it's very interesting because farmer doing the job, but like helicopter looking at the traffic, the seed company just can go what all over the farmer's field, how big will be yield, everything. Yeah. And it doesn't require something super big equipment as it was a few years ago. Just reasonable laptop do this all analysis. Yeah, so from a laptop we can measure, predict how big yields will be, use it in agriculture. So what's the one thing that if the people in the audience are looking to learn or, or use data, what should they do to get started, or what's the first step? We have to have a question. Have a question? Yes, because you cannot learn anything if you're not interested, if it's not connected to you. So they need a question for their business that the data could answer? For a business, or what it is, is then it can be move on. Yeah. Because as I started, the kids were, <laughs> We were all the same learners. The 
something fall on the floor, it means what well, this is the gravity. And now we use the mathematical models to learn what's going on in the big data. Okay. Here the process, what's going on. And it's not so simple. Big data, it's like name tag. But actually, like name tag, nice word to, uh, nice name to present event. Okay. Yeah, we're doing this. But actually, this is the system analysis. What is our meeting? It's a system. What exists one time in a week from nine to 10, is then it doesn't. Okay, what data we have about one million come? How many people come? Who come many times? Who is the first time? How many small businesses in Brookings? What is the person coming? So you didn't have the idea collecting this data, but now you can have watcher, cell phone, <laughs> you get this data, who, who is going to where and where spend time. The same this uh, variable, you can uh, have a watch or cell phone with monitoring your, during their activities. The data exists. But how to use this data? What you can get from this data? What the information for your health, for your uh, well-being, for your lifestyle, for what is it? So the data, we are here. We have to learn how to deal with them, what it is, is it scary or it can be, we can deal with this. So here is a kind of new <coughs> universe emerge. And we can move in this. So and I decide, okay, I can help people. I could help students for years. So I can help people. It may be interesting to figure out or do that some analysis for the company. I'm here in Brooklyn, so. Great. Well, let's uh, thank Boris for being here and sharing a little bit about big data. I am Heidi Gullix, and I'm the executive director of the United Way. And United Way has a new initiative this year that we're being able to bring to Brookings County, which is the 211 program. So we're really excited about it, and we're hoping to get you guys really excited about it too. We know a lot about it, so we are pumped up, fired up, super excited to have it come, and we want to get the word out to everybody else. So raise your hand if you know what 211 is, if you've lived in an area that had the coverage before. So a few of you guys, okay. So you guys are now my newest cheerleaders to help the community learn about 211. But 211 is just like a um, 411 or a 911, 501, where you can call it in, uh, it's a free phone call and you can get information. 211 is dedicated for human and social services. So everything about Brookings. Um, the United Way started working with agencies about mm, two, three months ago. In November, we had our first meeting, and then we invited those agencies and other nonprofit and community organizations to help us fill the database in. So they've been working with the Helpline Center in Sioux Falls to build that database. The great thing is, is that the Helpline Center in Sioux Falls already had all of the infrastructure in place. They already have the trained professionals that are there 24-7, 365 days to take these calls. So we didn't have to recreate it here in Brookings. We could just contract with them, and they actually answer all the calls in South Dakota. So currently, there's, uh, the coverage is in the Sioux Empire area. There's five counties out in the Rapid City area, and then Yankton and Bonham, and then we will be the newest county to be added on on February 11th. So we're excited about that. Um, this is a pretty widely used resource across the country. Right now, about 90% of, of the United States has the coverage, so we're excited to be able to get us, Brookings County, online uh, to be able to, to provide that. As we know, Brookings has a lot to offer. There's a lot of things going on here, a lot of great resources and um, help out there. And so 211 will help people be able to find those resources. One of the questions I get, oh, did I lose? There I am, okay. One of the questions I get a lot is, well, like why would I call 211? One of the flyers that I put on the, on the tables kind of gives some examples of that. So it can be anything from where do I get my driver's license, which is at the old sanctuary and they're closed on Mondays, or 
um, anything to, I need some information about a domestic abuse situation or what hours are the food pantry open? Where can I donate um, you know, my time in volunteering? So these are the types of questions you can call 211 about. The database will continue to grow and what's great is if somebody calls in and we, the Helpline Center doesn't have that information in the database, they'll contact us to help us so we know to search out that answer so we can fill that in. We'll also be able to get information at the end, I think each quarter, that they'll give us about what kind of calls are coming in so we can see where are the needs in Brookings and is there something that we don't have here? Is there a need that we aren't being able to provide as a community to our residents? So it'll help us in that respect too. What's really great is that it covers entire county. So folks in Volga and Bruce and Sinai, Elkton, Aurora, White, did I get them all? will be able to have this service as well because the United Way um, covers that entire area and so even if you're living in one of the smaller communities, you can get resources here in the Brookings County area. So that is the spiel on 211. Um, I could dance and sing and tell you guys a lot more, but um, I'd rather have questions. Uh, so who has a question for me about 211? Yes. You do talk to a real person. One of the first questions they will ask you is where are you calling from, what zip code? And then that's how they know what resources to pull up. Um, as I mentioned, they're there 24-7, 365. So they're, they have that coverage over you know, the middle of the night. Um, and they will help if it's a situation where they feel like that person maybe needs some other assistance right away, they can contact that other agency to get them connected. Most of the time it's a referral of here's the contact information to call and get the services you need or the information, but they will actually make a three-way contact if needed. The Brookings community can help us get this off the ground by um, calling 211. Use the service. Call it if you're not sure about where to call. I know the, the city gets some calls that maybe aren't in their wheelhouse, or the county resources get some calls, the chamber gets some calls. If you're not sure where to call, just call directly to 211 because they probably have the most up-to-date information. Um, and then let other people know about it. If you have a new neighbor move into town, let them know that we have the 211 service so they can get connected right away as well. Um, Brookings is a really great environment and, and community where we always want to help each other, but I only know what I know and 211 probably knows a lot more than I do. And so if I refer them to there, instead of just telling them my limited knowledge, they can get the full resources. Great. Um, if you are an organization or you know of an organization or agency that should be listed in the database, you can go onto the helplinecenter.org website, and there is a spot under the 211 services where you can go ahead and just input the data. They, it's a form that you fill out. It'll go to the 211 database. Um, administrator, she will review it, make sure that everything is complete, and then um, send it back if there's anything missing that they need, but then go ahead and approve it and become part of our database. Sure, if somebody calls in and, and 2 and one doesn't have an immediate answer for them, they will uh, try to reach out to United Way to see if they can find that, but the 2 and one Center does do follow-up calls with 5% of the people that they speak with. They will call and say, was this information helpful? Were you able to find the services needed? And which is great. And then also, I'm sure in that situation, if it's a an emergency situation, they will find some sort of resource, but if there just isn't that information, they can probably let them know to contact United Way as well. A community calendar. Yeah. A uh, community calendar would be an awesome resource, and there are a lot of good community calendars out there already. I'm not sure if there's a way to necessarily pull them all together. Um, 211 will have information if people let them know about it. So they may let them know about a volunteer opportunity or they may let them know about a diaper drive happening, those types of things. Uh, they'll let them, you know, they could call about holiday type of times that are happening if there's a turkey giveaway and those things. Um, within the 211 system right now, there is not necessarily a community calendar. There is a volunteer component 
that United Way is looking at being able to add on to help coordinate volunteer opportunities in the community, but we're starting with just the 211 helpline center at this point. Great question. The types of agencies and organizations and information that are on the 211 database, um, pretty much any nonprofit is going to be can be listed. Government services, so anything through the county or the city. Also, there's um, they they will look at allowing a private business to be listed on there if there's not a nonprofit or government agency that fits that niche. So if there's something specific that there, we don't have coverage between a nonprofit or a government agency, that, but we do have a business, they will look at uh, approving that to be listed. Okay. Um, the United Way funds are paying for this service, and it's a per person in the county charge. So there's, as we grow, we, we hope to still have some growth happen in Brookings County, but I don't think it'll get to the point where it won't be sustainable. That was one of the things that 211 wanted to make sure was going to be an option, that the funding would be continuous. We didn't want to put it in place for one year and then all of a sudden it's not there for people to use. And so the United Way funds, when they come in from the community, they go out majority to our agencies that we help fund through the different grant programs. And then United Way funds and administers three programs. One, the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. Two, the Dental Van, the Dakota Smiles Van. And then now, 211. Okay. Um, okay, the first question was, <laughs> about our, what are the metrics, what would we consider a success for the program. And that's gonna be the first, I would say probably year is just about getting the information out. So going around and telling people like you guys and, and all of the other places we're gonna be in the newspaper and things like that is getting the word out so we can start getting those people calling in. Um, so help us do that to show that this is a success in that regards. There's been a lot of community conversations, um, the, the charrette, agency conversations, different things like that, where this type of program kept coming up as a needed situation. And so we think getting it in place is a success because it's been talked about a lot as a need, and so we're excited to get it into place. And then as far as being able to tap into that information, I know 211 will be able to give us data, and so we'll be able to get information out about how many calls we had in and all of that type of information. Um, being able to connect it into your websites and things like that. I think you're more like the answers to questions, you know, so if you know all the resources, is that something that then gets pushed to the city website or the county website or uh, the user generated information that doesn't live anywhere else, is that accessible if I Google it, for example? So I know it, you can go on to the 211 website and be able to put in that you're searching for Brookings and then they have a bunch of different icons that you can click if you're looking for transportation or medical, whatever you're looking for, and then a certain page will come up that can even be printed off as a PDF. So hopefully people can, you know, if you wanted to take that page to have that always come up and then that would be the most current data that they have as well. Um, so last chance, anything you want to say or how should we on February 11th Celebrate, just all take out our phones and give it a call. Exactly, um, just, just remember it. Uh, we'll ha feel free to take some of the brochures. Um, just help us get the word out about 211, but use it as a resource. And like anything, it, you may not get 100% of your answers, but you're not gonna get it no matter where you call. So help us to, to have it all come into one place to be able to get those answers. And um, again, we couldn't have done this, and I keep going out. We couldn't have done this without the support of the community for the United Way Pledge Fund. And uh, if you guys missed the announcement in the register, the community campaign this year came up to 966200 and some dollars. So give your guys a hand there. Thank you. Thank you.